as we start to look at this gift of leadership, it's important to note that there are two aspects of this. There's both the call and the preparation. And you've already looked in your notes at the call aspect of this, taking Abraham as an example. Uh, now let's look at the preparation, how God prepared Abraham to uh, use the gift of leadership that he was giving him. And in fact, there are various elements to this preparation, which in effect took many years to, to, to bring about. The first aspect of this is that uh, God built on Abraham's heritage. The fact of the matter is, Abraham's family had already begun the migration towards where he was eventually going to end up. Terah, Abraham's father, had already moved the family and they'd begun that migration. They'd settled in a place called Haran. But when God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and called him to, to leave that land and go to a land that he was going to show him, it was building on an already established pattern of the family moving and migrating. Then, secondly, he, he grew, Abraham grew through his failure. In fact, the, the fact of the matter is we learn a lot more through our failures than we do through our successes. And as we move on into leadership, we'll come across uh, an awful lot of, uh, of, of failures. Well, Abraham did. Uh, for example, he experienced failure to fully obey God's calling. So when God calls Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, he tells him to, to leave his family and go. But then if you compare that with uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, what you notice is that he partly complied with that. He certainly started moving again, but he took Lot, a family member, with him. And of course, that failure to, to comply with what God was actually calling him to do led to all sorts of uh, different problems. Uh, for example, um, in, in Genesis uh, 13, and, um, where, where they had to separate. And in Genesis 18, where uh, Lot is, has settled uh, by Sodom and, uh, and Abraham has to bargain with God to, to spare Lot's life and his family's life. And Lot's descendants were, were the Moabites and the Ammonites. And there's a whole legacy of issues there between them and, and the Israelites, um, as you can see in uh, chapters 36 to, to 38. Now, this taught Abraham a valuable lesson that adding to God's will is as devastating in terms of consequences as not doing God's will, subtracting from God's will. Well, he experienced other failures as well. He experienced, for example, the failure to trust God. Uh, now, in Genesis 12, verses 10 to 20, uh, you can see that uh, that failure to trust God resulted in Abraham trying to pass his wife, Sarah, off as his sister. As he's traveling through Egypt, he fears that the Egyptians will see how beautiful his wife is and take her for themselves, or Pharaoh would take her for himself, and kill Abraham. And so Abraham, to save his own skin, and because he didn't at this point really trust God, arranges that Sarah would agree to, to say she was his sister. Although technically that's true, he was, uh, she was um, his half-sister, the reality is he was covering up the fact that they were married to save his own skin, with the consequences that, uh, that we know well. And of course, when we make our own plans out of a lack of trust in God's will and, and God's plans, disappointment is always the result. Now, Abraham learned through his failures to, to fully trust in God and obey him at all times, even when it seems like this will lead uh, to the end of those dearly cherished dreams. And so when you get to chapter 22 and he's finally had the son that he's been longing for, Isaac, and it looks like the promise is beginning to, uh, to take place, God calls Abraham into a, a test of ultimate obedience. Will you, be, will you trust me enough to sacrifice your son, your only son, 
And of course, Abraham by this time has learnt his lesson, this lesson through the past failures, and so takes Isaac uh, up the mount uh, and is about to sacrifice him uh, on a rock uh, when God stops him and says, now I know that you fully trust me. So all part of this preparation for leadership, God took Abraham through a series of tests to, to get him to, to fully trust him. Well, another aspect of this uh, preparation was the building of landmarks at significant points. Now, Abraham was, was a great one for building landmarks. When he first steps into the promised land uh, that God just, just gives him a glimpse of and says, this one day will be the land that I give you, he built an altar to, to commemorate that so that uh, he, was, he would always remember, and, and those who came after him would always remember, this is God's promise. And um, you can see this uh, again in Genesis chapter 12, uh, in verses 10 to 20. And he learned the importance of commemorating important milestones along the way. This is an important lesson for us as we prepare for leadership. When God tests us, when God stretches us, when we step out and do something, it's important that we remember those times, that we remember the lessons that were learned, whether that's through writing it down, whether it's through recording it in some other way, whether it's through telling somebody else, reflecting on it with someone. It's important that we build landmarks to help us remember the significant occasions. Well, I was saying a moment ago that uh, Abraham grew through his failure. Well, he, he also learned, mercifully, he learned from his mistakes and he experienced God's restoration. Now, God allowed Abraham to experience failure. He didn't shield him from the failure um, and he, he, he didn't shield him because he knew the truth, that we learn more through failure than we do really through spectacular successes. We, we grow through those experiences. And he also, Abraham also grew through the experience of being restored by the Lord. Reflecting on mistakes and on the Lord's restoration actually is essential to deal with character flaws in a leader. So actually Abraham twice chose to pass Sarah off as his sister. He didn't learn the first time in Genesis 12, and so we get to Genesis 20, and he does it again. And that same character flaw manifested itself in his son Isaac's life as well, in chapter 26, when he does precisely the same thing. Well, God continued to forgive Abraham and to work in his life until he became known as God's friend. So in James chapter 2, verse 3, it says, And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, that Abraham trusted God, and the Lord declared him good in God's sight. And he was even called the friend of God. Well, another aspect of this preparation of a leader, certainly in Abraham's life, and in fact in, in the lives of all those who want to move into the gift of leadership, is that Abraham was never allowed to take shortcuts. You know, the attainment of spiritual maturity is a, is a lifelong process. And the, the really great leader, the truly great leader, won't try to shortcut this process. Abraham needed to learn the lessons that taking shortcuts was a recipe for disaster. So, Chapter 16, for example, of Genesis, it describes just such a shortcut that he, he, he took. Time was getting on. Abraham and Sarah were still childless. So where was the promise now? I was, I was to be a father of, of, of a nation. And so Sarah suggests the shortcut of Abraham having a child with her servant. She offers her servant in her place so that they can at least have a child. And Abraham goes along with it. Now, the result of that is the birth of Ishmael, and who, who, who's the father of the Arab people. 
and resulted in an enmity which is still being played out um, in, in, in today's world. Leaders often fail to experience God's best because they fail to wait as long as necessary for God to accomplish his will. And then a final stage of preparation or aspect of the preparation uh, of, of a leader, certainly so in Abraham's life, was he demonstrated his faith. Abraham learned from his experiences and from his failures throughout his life and he, he reached the stage of maturity in his later life that enabled God to, to move him on to the next level. Now for that to happen, Abraham had to be willing to trust the Lord at, at a deeper level than ever. So as I've mentioned just a few moments ago, God challenged him to sacrifice his only son in chapter 22. Would Abraham obey and move to the next level of trust? Or would he demonstrate that this was as far as he was prepared to go? For Abraham to do extraordinary things, he would need an extraordinary relationship with God. The same is true for you and me. Now, Abraham demonstrated his level of maturity by choosing to agree to even take his own son's life. That's what God was challenging him to do, to see what level of trust he had. But you see, now the process of preparation for Abraham had taken uh, him from being a person who was prepared to sacrifice his own wife for his own safety, to make an easier life for himself, to trusting God to such an extent that he was prepared to be obedient to the level even of sacrificing his only son and his hopes for the fulfilment of all of God's promises. And the result? He became a godly leader. He became the father not only of the nation of Israel, but of many nations. He became known as the friend of God, as we've seen in, in James 2 verse 23. God had prepared Abraham for greatness as a leader. 